You the delivery stooge. I'm from Cloudpunk. I have your packages. Those are no use to me. I can't deliver to the outposts anymore. None of our vehicles work. The fuel lines froze. You should keep your engine running. Did you get that, Camus? Yes. I will keep a couple clock cycles free and monitor the temperatures. How do you live here? It's so cold. What do you care? I asked, didn't I? Whatever. Just leave the packages here. Go back to your city. It's not my city. Sure it is. You took this job because you were curious, right? Welcome to your poverty safari. This is our life. I'm not even from the city. The Eastern Peninsula? Up until last week. I see. Sorry. I thought you were just another Nivali. My name's Retsu. Rania. Cora knows what you must think of the big stack. That's what we call the city down here. It's the worst place on the planet. And we cling to the bottom like barnacles. And you know what? It's a hell of a lot better down here. We made this place a kind of home. You've been here a while? Yeah. I wasn't the first, though. Old Zeke traveled out here over a hundred years ago. He set up the first moisture farm, collecting heat for his home from the vents. Folk had tried to live here before him, but he was the first to realize you couldn't live on rations alone. And you had to be ready for the chills. So what was old Zeke's secret? Zeke realized you could cultivate the algae pits for warmth when the vents cycled cool. He realized you could mill the mold dust into flour. He figured out how to cross the steam lanes with a suit made from old abandoned Hover's insulation layers. I swear, they say no one alive can survive the wastelands between the cities. But if anyone could, it was Zeke. And you took his place as the boss? I'm the community leader, sure. But I'm not the longest surviving settler, not by a long shot. The elders living beyond the farim say they knew Zeke's grandkids. Tales of Zeke surviving, thriving even out here in the vents, attracted a lot of folk that wanted to live off the grid. Away from corp security, and the lights, and the headaches. Everyone has headaches in the big stack, you know. I don't. You will. Everyone gets them eventually. Doesn't the air smell cleaner down here? Every time I breathe in, it feels like my lungs are going to freeze and shatter. Well, that is the problem right now. This is supposed to be summer. How can it be summer here? The warm season. The vents cycle between warm and cold over a predictable time period. Or at least they used to. It seems like all the maintenance systems are going mad recently. We have a saying here, Cora provides. Well, right now all Cora is providing is a new ice age. What do you think Cora is? Cora is everything, and all of us. Cora is the provider, and the caretaker, and the disciplinarian. Cora holds out a closed fist, and we must push out our chin. Sometimes the fist holds wood, sometimes the fist strikes us, and yet we must endure. So Cora is your... Salvation. And right now, Cora has sent us you. I'm not really religious like that. I think you have to help yourself. Be independent. You can't lecture us on independence while you live in Nivalis under the watch of the corpse. You said you cling like a... what did you call it? A barnacle? Hmm. Harsh and fair words, Rania. I know you have seen Cordus light, though. It glows from you. Am I wrong? Who knows? So, you want me to deliver these parcels? I would appreciate it. 
We really are starving. Three families. I can give the coordinates to your vehicle. Okay, I'll get going then. I'll see you on the way back. Quarter willing. Be cautious around my brethren, Ronia. They live like sculptures of ice. Fragile and temporary. I was sent to deliver supplies? Sent by who? Cloudpunk. I don't know who that is. You from the big stack? Get out of here! 
You need this. It's food. I don't need nothing from you. Retsu said... Retsu sent you? Yes, he said you should take this. What did you say? Give it here. They don't trust us very much. I bet they have their reasons, Camus. brought you supplies. Who sent you? Retsu. Well, okay then. I ain't seen no one from the stacks down here in years. Decades even. You know, maybe you can use this. You put it in the wall and it gives you a token. Or something like that. Uh, thanks. It It's just five numbers on a bit of paper. That's right. Thank you kindly for the supplies. Now we even. Well, thank you kindly.
Hello, I'm here too. They already called me on the old CB radio and told me you were on your way. You're the talk of the town, lady. I'm just a delivery driver. Well, I don't know if anybody has said this to you before, but I'll say it now. Thank you. Uh, thanks. I mean, you're welcome. I'd get back to the city as quick as possible, lady. There's a chill coming. I can feel it in my bones. Anyone outside is going to get charted. Go, quickly. And don't think twice about coming back here, you hear? Okay, good luck. see Retsu. Why is he not moving? Oh no. Camus, find us somewhere to park. The security overrides won't let me. The temperature is too low. It is not safe to land now. If you got out of the Hova, you would feel very cold. Then you'd be stuck, like the man. He's not stuck, Camus. He's gone. He can't be gone. He can't move. Dead, Camus. He's dead. Aww. Fragile and temporary. Let's go. There's nothing else we can do. I am getting a message request. Why are you getting a message request? If there's a message request, it should come to my comm. The message is addressed to the Hova. So it's someone I don't know. Patch it through, I guess. My ship had finally come in, but in this case, the ship was a battered Hova. Redemption comes in all shapes and sizes, sometimes with bumps, dents, and a dime store paint job. What? Who is this? The dame wanted a name. What did I have left to lose? And yeah, nothing but my hat. I let her know that I was Huxley, but I, uh, left off the private investigator. She'd know the deal soon enough. Um, so you're a private investigator and your name is Huxley. The dame was as sharp as my ex-wife's parting words before she left me and moved back in with her mother. She'd pegged me as a P.I., but I, uh, still needed her help. Maybe I could drop some bills in her pocket, if she could get me back to the big stack. I think Huxley is malfunctioning. I'm closing this channel now. Please stop calling me. The dame was giving me a shoulder so cold, I was getting frostbite. I uh, had to sweeten the deal. I'd already mentioned the cash, but uh, no dice. Maybe I'd put it all on red and tell her about the girl I was trying to save. The dame sounded hot as ice, but Pasta's story was so sad, it would melt a diamond. Why does he talk like that? I might actually help him if he wasn't so annoying. I've never heard so many mixed metaphors in all my... I dangled the bait in the water, but the dame wasn't buying. Without my help, Pasta was done for. When the dead corpse finished with her, God knows what would be left. Dead corpse? Is he trying to save some girl from them? I have located his signal. I have a nav point. We could pick him up. Should I display the nav point? Hey Huxley, if you can answer a simple question, I'll take you back up the city. 
Are you really a PI trying to save a girl from a debt corp? Yes, is what I wanted to say. But the dame was suspicious, and who could blame her? Here I was, some abandoned PI android stuck in the hollows with a two-bit story about trying to save some girl. In her position, I would have hit the dirt in a heartbeat. But here's the kicker, the story was true. Fine. Camus, give me an F point. We'll take him with us and drop him off on the way.
Please stop. I need your help. I'm sorry, I can't. Just one moment. I know I look monstrous. No, you don't. I'm just really busy. Making deliveries. I know. That's why I need your help. They call me Patchwork. You need to call my company if you want a delivery. I can't take on jobs from people on the street. I can pay you. No one else will help me. People scream. They scream? The children are frightened. They tell stories about me. About the freak. Really? There are plenty of androids back in the Eastern Peninsula that want to wear dermis but can't keep it in good repair. In Navalis, such a thing is seen as an abomination. Unclean. Dermis is expensive. Do you... do you ever consider just living as an android? Never. I don't feel like an android. My body feels wrong. I want to have skin, to breathe, to feel, to sweat, to touch people without them recoiling. I understand. What do you want from me? I can't leave this alleyway. They run from me. Corpsec would fine me for causing a scene. I need Dermis. I can only buy from less reputable sources. You want me to buy you black market skin cells? No way. I can pay you well. As a human, it is not even illegal for you. Only androids are forbidden from buying from unofficial vendors. I'm sorry, you need to find someone else. There is no one else. I have been like this for a week. I will not live like this. I cannot. How far do I need to go? Just two blocks over. Here is the money. You can keep half. Fine. What is his name? Greppo. He stands in the corner. A thin mustache. He is hard to miss. And what is your name? I told you. They call me Patchwork. What is your name? Pete. I would like to be called Pete. I'll do what I can, Pete. It's me. Keep moving, Sec. What? I'm not Corp Sec. <laughs> sure you ain't. I don't have anything for you. Dermis. I need it. For a friend. Oh. <laughs> the skin job found someone to come out and play? How is Patchwork Man? His name is Pete. Pete? <laughs> Who's he fooling? He's a Patchwork Man. The wobbly jelly eyes and the flesh hanging off him like he's skin meat. What the hell is wrong with you? You know what they say about him? The patchwork man loves to see the smiles on kids' faces. That's why he wears them over his own. <laughs> oh. Just give me the dermis. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> Tell patchwork I said hi. That freak. Asshole. Here's what I can offer you today. Thanks. I look forward to seeing you again. I can't believe you have to deal with that Greppo guy. Did you get the dermis? Yeah, it's just a vial with some liquid. That's right. The cells are microscopic, but they grow and renew. I'll have full human skin for a few months, at least. Then it breaks down. Can you get something more permanent? Not unless a million limbs suddenly appear in my bank account. Would you ever live as an android? 
Would you? I guess not. Thank you for your help. See you around, Pete. The dame really came through. Why do you talk like that? Who was this bum that was questioning me? Another tin can with an attitude and too many questions. I gave him the brush off. Hey, don't talk to him like that or I'll drop you in the hollows. The dame had a point. I'd better play nice for now. I'd slip her some bills when she took me to the holocash machine. A handful of limbs should help dip this sour lemon in a little sugar. Can you understand what he is saying? About 40% of it. The dame and the car were close. Any fool could see that. But I, I looked beyond the surface. She was a girl from out of town. Still as green as the water supplies down in the vents. You said you're a private investigator. Do you really think that's how they talk? She had an attitude, but I liked her. And a dog, too. How did he know I was... am... your dog? I guess that's what investigators do, right? There was a holocash machine up ahead, but I had to keep a real low profile. I'd give the dame my number and let her grab the cash for me. And that number would be? I gave her the digits. Five, four, two, four, four. She was a smart cookie. She'd remember them.
shut off the bill. Surely the dame would drop me like a bad penny now. This is a lot of money. I can drop you somewhere else if you like. Why are we helping him more? He's kind of growing on me. Hmm. The dame had a heart of gold. I asked her to drop me at my office. On the way, I'd tell her about Pashta. Maybe she'd fall for me like I'd fallen for her. I do not like this. Where is this office of yours, Huxley? We were headed towards my office in Old Town. I gave the dame a nav point to help her out. Hold on, Pashta. It won't be long now, kid. Thanks. Who is this Pashta, anyway? What happened to her? It was a story so sad it could make a bronze statue of a lawyer cry. It all started with a call from a small-time hustler called Peter Unthrink. He tended a bar downtown, but he had some bad debt. The debt corp took his cash, but when that wasn't enough, they took his daughter too. He had a record, so Corpsec wasn't gonna help him. With nowhere left to turn, he sought the help of Midtown's best, cheapest P.I. So the debt corpse can abduct children now? The Dane didn't realize who she was dealing with. The debt corpse had hearts blacker than my morning cup of joe. Huxley, were you always like this? Did something happen to you? The dame thought I had a screw loose. I guess her instincts were good. Truth was, there was a time when I sounded just like every other humdrum android out there. Now, I played a role so well I was stuck in it. My programming was uh, messier than my accounting. Here's the kicker. I was a better investigator now than I'd ever been.
life orb. Become your new perfect. This is all boarded up. Did you get fired? The dog was half right. I was fired, but that place was where I slept. So I, I guess I was homeless too. Eviction was the illness, but what was the cause? Probably not paying your rent. There's a note on your door. Shouldn't you read it? Who knew how hot this place was? I was sure I'd been tailed. If I stepped up to that doorway, I might get a knife in the back or a bullet in the head. I think you're being overdramatic. I'll check out the note. What if it is not safe? I'll take my chances. I want to see what this note says.
Okay, I can see the note. It says, go to the blue, chewy jazz bar and ask for the smoking man. We're not taking him there, too, are we? I couldn't ask the dame for much more. She'd already stuck her neck out for me. We can drop him off at the bar. It's close by. It was a dive, but it was the kind of place you'd go for answers. Who had left me that note? Who was the smoking man? And where would I... We have an incoming call. Control? No. It is for Huxley. I knew who was calling. This would be bad. Put it through, I guess. What in Cora's name you think you're doing, you pile of junk? Where have you been? The client was mad, and with good reason. He'd paid good money, but I'd been stuck down in the hollows following a lead. The lead went cold, and I was trapped down there with no comm signal and no cash. You wasted my money and my time. If you don't find my daughter, I'm infecting you with a logic virus. I have hacker friends. Hey, what the hell? I don't know who you are, but you better leave this idiot to do his job. I was going to save that girl, but not because of the threats. Truth was, I was... The only one searching for her. 24 hours, then your time's up. I want my daughter back, but if she's gone, she's gone. I'll live with that. But what I won't stand for is some android stealing my money. Get to work. He hung up. We're close to the bar. I hope the dame would come with me. Was that too much to ask? Uh, yes. I'll come to the entrance, but after that, we need to get back to work. And if Control calls with another job at any point, you're on your own, Huxley. The offer was as fair as the spin of a roulette wheel. I rolled the dice and took a gamble. You don't use dice in roulette. I know, Camus. Just let it go. Check out this season's best-selling emotional immunization.